Mike Wilson. Yeah. Last week, Mike said that it was Monday, I think. Mike Wilson said the correction mm -hmm. had arrived and it was likely to get worse. You know what Mike Wilson's saying today, Pete? Mike Wilson says the correction's <laughs> over. That was quick. Wow. That's that that is quick. I'm not so sure I necessarily agree with it being over. I love love Mike Wilson. I listen to his work all the time because I think he's one of the sharpest there is on Wall Street. But uh, Scott, we had that one day, and if you just go back a little over a week ago, it was that Friday where we had that that 600 point down move, and we also had a volatility index that was hitting 37. The acceleration of how volatility dropped all the way down towards 21, I can understand where the interpretation would come from to say, you know what, maybe that was it. But I'm not so sure that that's 100% true. But I think at the same time, Scott, I found myself, as you know, because we talked about this last week, getting aggressive with how I was selling options against my longs, uh, long stock positions. But I'll tell you what, the, the, the opportunities, I think, in the derivatives markets absolutely continues to explode to the upside. We're averaging in February well over 40 million contracts per day. And I was just counting up how many uh, positions I have on right now on the, on the option side of things, and it's just about 60. So it gives you a little idea of just how much activity we are seeing and how much volume we are seeing and where they're going. It's financials, it's energy, it's also technology and some biotech. So they really are spreading out across the board in terms of, uh, of where folks are attacking right now, funds are attacking right now, because these are really big trades. But um, I still have a little hesitation in me, Scott, in terms of whether or not we've actually hit the bottom. I, I wonder if we've got a, a few more uh, drops to come in the next couple of weeks. Well, okay, Bryn, so let, let's discuss whether you agree with that. Now, Mike Wilson seems to have realized once again what everybody else has realized is that mm. the market, well, the correction's over for a reason, and that's because of a variety of factors. Let's listen to Mike Wilson, and we'll talk about it on the other side. Here's why he says the correction is now over. The markets are are quite uh, powerful at the moment. I mean, and it ha they have been, right? I mean, there's tremendous liquidity. There's a very uh, good and very understandable story behind the scenes, meaning we've got a, a strong economic recovery that's visible to everyone. The earnings season's been good so far. We wrote about that this morning. And, and uh, people have bought into it. All right, Bryn, you're up. Now, I'm not picking on Mike. I'm just making the point of, you know, every time you try and call a correction or somebody tries to call a correction and then it doesn't work out, you fall back on, well, there's no correction because look where we are. Look at all of the liquidity in the system. Bryn, do you agree? If I can channel my inner Peter Lynch that, you know, more money has been lost anticipating the correction than actually the corrections themselves. And I think it's, uh, it's a tough job to be a strategist. Mike Wilson obviously does very good research, but that's a tough job to try to call that. I think when you go back and just say, you know, to quote Peter Lynch, but also just to look that corporate balance sheets are the best they've been in 50 years. Household debt equities are at the lowest in 40 years. And I think this stimulus, when we talk about like economics 101, the velocity of money, is that the government sending direct checks for multiple times to a broad swath of Americans is so stimulative. And so, and so I just think when you have these ingredients, plus you have earnings have come in so strong, I think trying to call, the, call some type of correction is just a fool's errand. I think settle in, buckle up, and, you know, volatility is the price of admission. But, you know, we have a good old-fashioned bull market here. And I think people just need to understand that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think a lot of people do understand that. Rob Seachin, including Credit Suisse today, which puts out a very bullish note, quote, we may see the equity rally continue without a pause. Wow. With next resistance for the S&P 500 seen at 4070 or 4075. That mm -hmm. is bullish. Is it right? I think it is. You know, you have to make hay while the while the sun's shining. But the problem is, I think everybody's making hay, and uh, we've all moved to the same side of the boat, and that does concern me uh, a little bit. But there's no denying that the inventory cycle is rebuilding, the capex cycle is initiating, housing cycle is uh, is recovering. There's profit revisions, volatilities coming in, the yield curve steepening. These are all incredibly uh, bullish signs, but I think they're obvious to all of us. So I love the fact when I hear, hear Pete have a little bit of caution because we need 
people to have some caution so that markets can climb walls of worry. Um, it's the delta in positioning that drives markets forward. I think there's a lot of room for that, though. I definitely do. So I would say I wouldn't be surprised to see some more volatility. Wouldn't be surprised. But I think getting too cute around that is not, not too wise. Because I think the long-term trajectory is positive around the stimulus, the support of the Fed, and the reopening of the economy. So I, I tend to agree with Mike. 